the next question is for octahedral mn2 and tetrahedral ni2 complexes consider the following statements see read the statement very carefully he is talking about octahedral mn2 and tetrahedral ni2 okay first thing second whenever such questions are given uh, you know you should first calculate the electronic configuration you know it won't take much of a time believe you me see manganese is 25 the atomic number is 25 i'm giving the easiest possible way to find out the electronic configuration simply write 4s over here and 3d over here so it is 4s2 3d5 for manganese so when you talk about manganese 2 plus it will be 3d5 okay similarly nickel is atomic number is 28 so that is 4s2 3d8 you remove two electrons it becomes 3d8 okay now first of all he is saying octahedral mn2 so basically six ligands are going to attack fine now if these six ligands if you check up if they are strong or they are weak you might either get a low spin complex or a high spin complex that is what the question is based on let's have a look at it both the complexes can be high spin yes if you are using a weak field ligand it can be a high spin complex because there are five unpaired electron with manganese and there are two unpaired electron in the case of nickel now it says nickel 2 complex can very rarely be low spin now see this is very very important over here my dear friends because we are talking about tetrahedral ni2 okay which means that we are considering the tetrahedral crystal field splitting over here so it can be only a rare chance that it can be a low spin complex or the pairing of the electron may take place okay fine third statement is with strong field against mn2 complex can be low spin yes agreed upon because the pairing will take place in the case of the mn2 plus so this is also right generally it happens that if there are four statements and first three are right fourth is wrong right but it is generally also let us have a look at the choices we can do a bit of elimination technique over here so in uh, okay 3 2 3 and 4 so the idea is one is wrong out of these so first three are correct fourth has to be wrong okay but anyways let's check it out aqueous solution of mn2 ions is yellow in color no dear everybody knows it is not yellow it is pink in color all right so see my gut feeling was right fourth answer fourth statement is not right so which is the correct answer the correct answer is that one two and three only why do you write only <laughs> the three statements but anyways one two and three only are the correct statements so my dear friends the right answer is four let's look at the 11th problem consider that a d6 metal ion okay m2 plus forms a complex with equal ligands and the spin only magnetic moment of the complex is 4.90 Bohr magneton. The geometry and the crystal field stabilization energy of the complex is, okay, so the two things which are being asked. Now, how to proceed over here? First of all, when you are given a D6 complex, right? So, D6 basically means that you are having six electrons over here but are they like two 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 or two over here and then one in each how do we come to know to help you out in that they have given you the bohr magneton value of 4.9 so uh, the spin only magnetic moment is given by the formula under root of n into n plus 2 and the value of this is given to be 4.9 so basically if you square it up it will be nearer to 24 which basically means that the value of n should be equal to 4 which means that there are 4 unpaired electrons okay so how you should fill it up this is how now there are two possibilities with this d6 because they are asking about cfsc and they are in the choices you see delta t as well as delta naught which means that we have to look at both tetrahedral crystal field splitting and octahedral crystal field splitting let us look at the splitting see if i go for the octahedral crystal field splitting over here i will have okay 
one, two, three, four, and this five and six. So this is T two G, and this is E G. Okay. So this is the case of octahedral. In the case of tetrahedral, I'll be having. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. This is E G. This is T two G. Okay. This is octahedral. This is tetrahedral. Right. Now, how do we find out whether it is octa or tetra? So that will depend upon the CFSE. Over here, the formula for CFSE should be. E G is on the top, so this is zero point six into the number of electrons in E G delta naught minus zero point four electrons in T two G delta naught. Let us put down the values. How many electrons do you see over here? Two. So it should be 0.6 into two delta naught minus 0.4 into four. You can see four electrons over here. Delta naught. So this will give you 1.2 minus 1.6. That is minus 0.4 delta naught. Can we end the question over here? Let us see. See, first of all, there is no 0.4 delta naught, <laughs> but then which is the right answer? Okay, so we cannot end it over here. We have to solve for the tetrahedral CFSE also. So over here, CFSE will be given by 0.4 T2G delta T, right? Minus 0.6. Eg delta T. How many electrons do you see in T two G three? So it should be point four into three delta T minus point six. Here also there are three electrons delta T. So this is one point two minus one point eight, which means minus zero point six delta T. Okay, dear friends. Minus 0.6 delta T. Let us see whether we have it in any of the choices. Yes, here we have it. Minus 0.6 delta T. So the right answer is tetrahedral and minus 0.6 delta T. That is choice number three. Right? I will not call it as a difficult question, so to say, but yes, a very good question in the sense. See that first, it wants you to know how you are going to fill up the electrons in the d orbital. how or what is the formula of calculation of spin only magnetic moment from there how will you calculate the number of unpaired electron then what is octahedral crystal field splitting what is tetrahedral crystal field splitting and then how do you calculate the crystal field splitting energies mixture of concepts in one question right a very good question answer is third let's go to the next one Which of the following compounds will show retention in configuration? Okay, retention in configuration on a nucleophilic substitution by OH minus ion. Here, let me tell you one thing. You know, the very first thing that you should look up whenever such a question comes up is, but what generally you look up at? You look up at sir whether it will be SN one or SN two. See, what you should look at is. that he is asking you about the retention in configuration first of all check whether the attack is happening on the chiral carbon or not right that should be the first thing and then you should worry about sn1 or sn2 so over here you look at this particular case first case is this carbon chiral huh yes it is chiral we'll talk about it later on whether it is sn1 sn2 retention will take place or not first let us look at the chiral carbon Is this chiral? No. Third case: Is there a chiral carbon over here? Yes, there is a chiral carbon, but the substitution is not happening on the chiral carbon. Okay. Next case: uh, Is this chiral? Yes, this is chiral. 
substitution is happening on the chiral carbon yes see my dear friends if the substitution is happening over here it can go via sn1 or sn2 fine and there can be retention or inversion in configuration right agreed choice number 2 there is no chiral carbon forget about retention right or inversion choice number 1 you have a chiral carbon and the substitution is happening on the chiral carbon. So, again there can be retention, there can be inversion. Look at case number 3, there is a chiral carbon, but does the substitution take place on the chiral carbon? The answer is no, where is it happening? It is happening on the carbon next to it. So, substitution will take place over here, the, over here the configuration will not change. So, there will be retention in configuration. So, now you see you do not have to worry about SN1 and SN2 those students who have wasted their time in this question thinking SN1 or SN2 and mark the wrong answer you know please try to understand there is no point talking about it simply check where is the substitution taking place okay so the right answer is third 